What's different in leadership for engineering versus in other roles? How can you grow as a manager in a smaller organization, especially when you're the only manager? What advice do I have for managers who are going from managing engineers to managing managers? Hey, this is Gary Gary with The Pragmatic Engineer, and this is the third and final part in the series of developing engineers into leaders. In part one, I talked about my journey into engineering management. And in part two, I talked about my approach on how to create a team of leaders, a team where everyone is a leader. This is the final part of a talk I did on CTO Craft Conference. If you're a tech lead or a manager or a CTO, subscribe to the newsletter. I also regularly read it and like it. Let's jump into the recording and in the end, I'll share, did I miss coding as a manager? So we've got some great questions from the audience I'm going to start bringing in. From your perspective, what's the different, what's different about leadership in engineering versus other roles within an organization? I do wonder sometimes if us, if us engineers over mystifying how engineering is different than other things. And sometimes I think we, we tend to overthink this. For a typical software engineer, you can look at the code and you can look at the artifacts and you can totally understand that. If, if I compare it to something like, let's say, accounting or, or, or law, you might actually not pay that much attention. I think as a leader, you have the ability to dive into individuals' work, which is both a good thing, but a bad thing. I've had some VPs so at Uber, someone who, who supervises 600 people or is has under them who pinged one of my engineers directly saying this feature i looked at the code it doesn't seem like a big deal when will it be done <laughs> excuse me first of all you shouldn't do that but you have the opportunity to do that. so i think that's a huge difference that when you get to leadership you actually can look through the whole stack in our organization's code repositories and documentation everything is there uh, i do see at uber i saw directors and others comment on to design documents and sometimes not really the code, they didn't touch that, but but they were there. I think that's a big difference. It's, it's a bit like if you're right. in a construction site, you, you don't have this access. So that's the biggest one I see. Okay, there's a really interesting question here. and I'm going to paraphrase it and forgive me if the emphasis is incorrect, but it's what would you recommend us to develop from managers to manager of managers and do you miss coding? And I believe what's being asked here is how do you make that change from being a manager to that pedagogy of managing managers? And what was the biggest learning for you in that? So I made this change about a year and a half ago, and it is a very big change. For me, going to, to going from developer to manager felt smaller of a change because I prepared for it. And there's a lot of materials and you can talk to a, a lot of people. With manager of the managers, you lose control even a lot more and you have to fully rely on, on that person. And, and it turned into a lot of coaching. The results will be slower as well. It's very interesting because if things go well with the new manager or with the manager that you're managing, it's okay. But it's the question, the, the challenge is really when something doesn't go wrong on how do you debug that manager and their team. I like that phrase. And the one thing I think you should remember is, is when you become a manager, your team is now those managers but there's one layer underneath them, which is their directs. And you do want to keep an ear on the ground. You do want to have one-on-ones with your skip levels, especially with a few key skip levels, and you want to listen to the signals. You also need to become a lot more patient. This is something I found hard. When you become a manager, you learn to be a bit more patient because you can't have it immediately. But as a manager of manager, you need to be even more patient. You almost have to stop yourself from caring too much on the short term. Just like when you're a manager and, and you're coaching a junior engineer, they're going to fail, but you don't tell them they're going to fail. You let them fail. You sometimes need to do that with managers. The, the best advice I have though, is, is get a mentor. Like what I mean by that, either pay for a service like Plato, or even better if you can have it within the organization or someone who has made that transition to manager of managers, because it is different. You'll be out of your depth and it is, it's even harder to get feedback. I like that. I love that debugging managers piece. And I do really believe in that giving people the freedom to fail. A manager of mine, a good friend and advisor once said to me, give people enough rope to hang themselves with, but be there to catch them when they fall. And I think that's really important. And that comes down to that support that the managers need as well. And there was one last bit there was, do you miss the coding? Do you still code? I know you're right. Yeah, so I, it's very interesting. I had a long and I think successful career in, in, in software engineering. I, I worked full from thick client back when there were thick client WPF and, and so on. I did distributed systems. I did mobile and iOS, Android and Windows phone. I was at the point I was talking with my manager before at Uber when I was a senior engineer. I told him, look, I could either be a manager or I could be an engineer. And 
But I told them I'm not as excited about being an engineer because I, I didn't feel there's as much for me to grow. My biggest growth will be how do I influence these bigger groups at Uber? And now that I've, I've now left Uber and I, I did code a little bit on the side, I realized I, I don't miss coding. It's a tool. I can get things done. My wife actually, since the day I stopped coding when I became manager, she became a developer through a bootcamp, and so she started it. I, I, I feel there's so little that I can improve. So I, I felt I got to a really good place where I was very happy with, and I don't think I can improve as much. I find people a lot more interesting. And you know what? The longer I'm a manager or, or I'm not in the coding role, I'm now finding business fascinating, understanding how our company is successful, what makes the money, what drives mm -hmm. customers. And I'm learning so much about that psychology. But I think everyone will be different, right? This is just my experience. Absolutely. I think that's a really important step change and it's a different experience. I now work as a VC yeah. for 10 years. Just no, one no, last no, thing, no. do you miss it or not? I, I found that I didn't miss it because I went back to doing it. And what, by the way, if you were at a level where you could cope comfortably, it doesn't go away. It's, it's like riding a bicycle is there. So that actually gave me a lot of comfort. And when I go back to coding and I sometimes help my, my wife, I, I still code like a senior engineer. Maybe I'll need to get a, a bit of being up to speed, but it's there. It doesn't go away. So you can always go back to it. I think this is a really important question. Once touched on it around apprenticeship programs, formal mentorship, these are great in the larger organizations. But how do you grow your skills as a leader when you're possibly the only engineer in that entire organization if you're a smaller company? So as a manager or as an engineer? Or both? As an engineer and a manager where you might be the CTO, the senior dev, the dev in that organization, when you don't have that support to grow yourself, how do you grow? I, I believe that you can only grow when you learn from someone. You grow when you try out new things and to try out new things, you need to get inspired and you also want to get feedback. I used to not care or, or believe too much in mentorship when I was an engineer. And I think I got, got away with it because I have people around me as a manager get a mentor. If you are the only one, have your company invest in you. You can get connect with people online or meet people locally. So you might be able to do it for free. Just reaching out to people saying, hey, I'm a manager. Do you want to meet up and just start with having coffee or go to dedicated places where for not a huge fee for three, four, five hundred dollars, pounds a month, you actually can get paired with experienced people. I, I do this. So there's this service called Plateau. There's some other ones as well. I don't get paid anything. I just volunteer my free time. Company charges money. So it's a great business model for them. But I do it because I love connecting to people. Often I, I just confirm that they're doing the right thing. Do that. It's affordable. It's there. Get a mentor if, if you don't have it. You need it. Uh, you need it more than Brilliant. you think you do. Fantastic. And I think with that's us done. Thank you, Gerge, for talking with us today. You can connect with both Gerge and myself after the session on social media. We're both available on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you all for joining. It's been a pleasure. If you're a manager, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you're not, and you're interested in engineering management topics, as well as software engineering, also hit subscribe so you're not gonna miss my future videos. If you have questions about engineering management, drop them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them either in a video or in the comments. Thanks.